Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for some more RMU club sports action. We're up here at the North Athletic Complex today for club basketball, the RMU Colonials versus the Xavier Musketeers in NCBBA action. I'm going to be your play-by-play -play man today, Alexander Gannon, alongside me, Jordan Wirtz. Jordan, what do you uh, think we have in store here today? I think we got a pretty good game coming here. It's a massive matchup between North Atlantic West Conference opponents here, RMU and Xavier. RMU coming out with a record of 6-2. and two. Ranked 35th right now in votes in the nation, and Xavier coming in with an overall record of six and five, five and three in the conference. Both teams big wins in the last couple games here. RMU coming with a record of five and one in the last three series, and Xavier coming in with a record of four and two. Xavier lost a close one with Wright State, 79 to 80 in their last game. RMU picked up a big win over Wright State, 65-56 in their last game. It's funny how both of these teams have played Rice State as their most recent opponent. I believe Xavier played them last weekend. RMU played them two weekends ago. This is RMU's second uh, home stint of three this season. This will be two games this afternoon, both here uh, at RMU's home court against Xavier. They'll also be home for their final two home games of the year next weekend against, I believe it's Ohio State Gray for their, their home finale. Yeah, they're gonna, they have a big matchup coming next week against Ohio State Gray, who's ranked in the top 25. Uh, some big players to think about here for RMU in their last home stretch here. Dewan Williams dropped 15 points in one game. David S Solomon Jr. dropped 19. Elijah Cross averaged 12 and a half points in their two game matchup against Dayton in their last home stretch. And Robert Goldsberry for Xavier was actually named the uh, North Atlantic West Conference Player of the Week last week for his performance against Wright State. You'd argue that uh, maybe we'll see one of the Colonials onto that list for this weekend if one of them has a standout performance here this weekend. Obviously couldn't win the award last week and when they didn't play. But maybe that'll change here today. It looks like both teams are just about ready to take the court in what should be a very riveting uh, first game of this two-game series. Looks like we're going to have Dewan Williams for the Colonials out on the faceoff. Mari Fontaine, Keith Franklin, David Solomon also on the court, and I believe there's going to be Eliza Cross as the Colonials' fifth player. Xavier's going to start with Josh Bolesky, Robert Goldsberry, Josh Martin. I'm not exactly sure who the other two guys are. We cannot see their numbers. Yeah, unfortunately, we're, 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 yeah, we're staring at the Xavier, not the numbers right now, but we'll we'll try and get you who's on the court here and we'll get a better look. Uh, Kevin Kayanga was the one doing the tip-off there for Xavier as RMU wins the tip-off and we'll be looking to get the opening points here in this one. Eliza Cross with it, trying to get something set up. Cross fires it over the Franklin. Looking for something to do with it. Back to Cross. Fires a three and misses it. Goldsberry coming the other way now for Xavier with a little bit of speed. Looking to drive the lane. Fires it back out to the point. That's going to be John Martin with the ball. Back to Goldsberry. And he's trying to set something up here. Team president and the point guard trying to get something going. Nearly loses the ball from behind, and they're going to. They on the break. Sullivan with the layup, and that's two points for RMU. That's a nice, easy breakaway for RMU there. They had Sullivan down there deep on the other end for that turnover. Just an easy layup. Quick two points for them here. Nice job to convert there from the Colonials defense to put some offensive points on the board. We'll see if they can do it again here on this possession. A minute away, 2-0 RMU so far. Bolesky with it. Over to Eusebi. Uh, Back to Bieksi. And that is going to go out on RMU. Sullivan smacked it right out of the hand of Bielski. That's the way I need to say this is Bielski. Um, smacked it right out of his hands, but out of play. Xavier's ball on the inbound. Yeah, and Sullivan's already showed up twice here on offense and defense. Could look to be an impact player here for RMU throughout this game. Well, he was one of the ones you mentioned earlier as Xavier goes for the three and gets it off the rim. Sullivan with the rebound, taking it the other way for RMU. And that was Eusebi of Xavier taking that deep three. Speaking of deep three, David Sullivan drains it from downtown. Three points there for RMU. Sullivan is on fire right now. Five quick points. And nearly a turnover there for Xavier. The bench there for RMU starting to get real fired up. They're liking what they're seeing here in the opening couple minutes. Coach Taylor Williams shouting uh, instructions from the bench there. Here comes Bielski trying to drive in. Can't get it to go. Dewan Williams with the rebound. And they're going to be, it's going to be Colonial's ball here. 
two minutes in. Colonials are looking pretty sharp, Jordan. And a great block by Cross there on the throw up to knock it off the rim. I don't think if he would have hit that, it was going to sink right into the rim there. It just danced around it, flew right back out. Yeah, man. RMU is looking sharp. So far, so good there for the Rob Morris University Colonials. Bielski had to tie his shoe. That was the holdup. But now we're back in action here as Elijah Cross is going to take it down the court for RMU. And this is interesting for RMU. Xavier averages over 70 points per game right now, and they are holding him out to zero here in the first few minutes. This could turn into quite the interesting turnout if Xavier can't get themselves on the board. Cross nice. gets the easy rebound there for the layup. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it may have looked like a shot, but I'm going to say it might have been a pass there for Elijah Cross down low, as that is Xavion Eusebi for Xavier getting their first points of the game. It's now 7-2 RMU. A couple of uh, scoring drives for both teams here now that both teams are starting to find a little bit of rhythm here on offense. Yeah, it seems like Xavier's finally getting things together here on offense and defense. Well, maybe not defense, but at least offense here getting themselves on the board here, down five. Yeah, got to start somewhere. Speaking of which, that is going to be a foul against Xavier. It's going to be RMU's ball still as that goes out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be on Kevin Kayonga of Xavier, just trying to get the reach in and knock it out. Cross to inbound, gets it to Williams. Williams looking for it back to Fontaine. Shelves it over to Selman. They're going around the point here to Franklin. Franklin looking for a lane to go down low. Driving the net, lays it up off the rim, and Xavier gets the rebound coming hard the other way, but not given any room as he makes his way down the court. That's Martin looking over the Kayanga. They've stopped for something. Oh, they stopped. It appears uh, Kayanga had earrings in. The refs can mm. stop the game. Xavier will retain possession. They just need to take their jewelry out if they have any. Doesn't appear to be any other players, just Kayanga here. And they're going to resume action. Kayanga throws it into Goldsberry. Good call there from the referee. Don't want anybody getting hurt. Here comes Goldsberry. Back over the Martin. Martin trying to find some room, not finding any. Feeds it over into the corner, tried to get it to Eusebi, but that ball is out of bounds and almost into the crowd. And it'll be RMU's ball here. That is one thing with the way this uh, gym's currently configured. Uh, the stand is right up to the court, so if you're at this game, man, you're getting a great view of the action. Yeah, if, if I was either one of these teams, I would avoid that side as much as possible. Playing close there with the bleachers is going to be dangerous for them because there is not much space to work with, unlike the bench side. Williams tried splitting two defenders, and they're going to call a reach-in, I believe, here against Xavier. It's going to be RMU's ball on the inbound. They're going to hand off to Franklin as he'll look to get this ball back into play. Williams back to Franklin, driving the net, lays it up from behind, can't get it to go. Williams gets the rebound, puts it home for RMU. 9-2 now the score as Xavier drives down the lane. Like rebounds might become a big factor here for RMU as almost all of their points here have resulted off of a rebound on a missed shot. Bielski trying to go around the world, can't get it to go, and here comes Cross now the other way. Fires it up to Solomon with a spin move, gets it up, and that's going to be waved off. I think they're saying that was, uh, they got his knee in the way, so they might call that a shooting foul there against Xavier. Oh, they're going to call it a trip. going to call it a trip here. It's going to be an inbound. Seems like RMU's playing with a lot of pace when they get that ball on the break. Yeah, and it seems like Xavier's having trouble handling it right now, just forcing fouls to prevent the, the shots here to try and keep RMU off the board. Lies across now, looking to get something set up. Surveying the defense, seeing what's there. Slowly makes his way in, tries using the pick. Fires a three, and it's off the rim. Here comes Xavier now in transition. That is Kianga. Driving the net, goes to lay it in. Can't get it to go. Franklin got a bit of his hand on that ball, preventing that from being uh, as clean of a layup as he would have liked. Yeah, that's a tough break for Kianga, too. He played that deep. And speaking of tough breaks, Solomon with his second three of the game. It's now 12-2. We are not even five minutes in, and RMU has opened up a double-digit lead here early. Speaking of double digits, Solomon is almost there. He's got eight right now. He's a layup away from pushing double digits in this game. He's also been very involved in the rebound game there for RMU early. 
Goldsbury can't get it to go, and now here come the Colonials once again with some speed. Solomon looking to make a move. Pulls up from a deep two and gets it to go. Man's on fire right now, and Xavier calls a timeout, and I can't say I blame him. It's already 14 to two. He is absolutely killing it out there right now. I can see the flame shooting up from up here. His hands are hot, hotter than lava right now. But not only has he had a bit of a hot hand, he has been putting in the work to get those opportunities because he has been rebounding on both sides of the court, making smart passes when he hasn't had a lane. Overall, just a really, really solid effort so far in the opening couple minutes here from David Solomon. Yeah, not just Solomon putting in the work. This defense in general has been great at stopping Xavier at, at any opportunity. Mid jumpers, long shots, even layups, nothing seems to be working for them as they've only gotten two points so far in the first five minutes of this game. From a team that averages 70 points a game, this is not what you want to see from them not starting out. Yeah, but if you're uh, if you're Coach Taylor Williams, you got to be real happy not only with the way RMU's been playing transition offense, but particularly how stingent they've been on the defensive end, forcing turnovers, making Xavier take bad shots. It's just overall been a really sound effort through the opening couple minutes here. We'll have to see if the Musketeers can get back at it here after the timeout. We'll see if they've cooked up uh, a new strategy to try and attack this Colonials defense, which has looked really good so far. Here comes Goldsbury making his way down the court with plenty of time. Drops it over to Martin. Martin fires it across. I'm not entirely sure which number that is, but he's driving the lane. Xavier puts it up. That was Eusebi. He's got the only point so far for the Musketeers. He's up to four now. And here come the Colonials the other way. Elijah Cross faked the deep three and is now looking to set something up here. That was a pretty great move by Eusebi, too, just to get in there, split through two RMU players for a nice layup for him. I think Keith Franklin uh, is mad at that door. He just threw that ball trying to get it down low to Fontaine, and it missed the and just slammed the handle of that door. Yeah. I had a little bit too much mustard on him there. One of the right door owes him money. <laughs> uh, he might. Goldsberry. Oh, man, Solomon got with the reach, but didn't stop him from trying, man. He was all over Goldsbury there trying to get that happen. Solomon's got to be careful here. He can't – I understand wanting to score points, but you're up 10 right now. You don't want to try and force it and give yourself unnecessary fouls here, especially when you're the top score right now for RMU putting up most of the points. Yeah, when it's uh, still this early on, you gotta you got to be careful not to take senseless fouls. Not that there's any really a time for senseless fouls, but especially when you have the hot hand. Goldsbury trying to drive the lane against Cross. And they're going to say that is RMU's ball. He couldn't hold on to it. Goldsbury just lost control of it there, and it just went right out of his hands, flew out of bounds. Tried to retain it and throw it back in, just couldn't get there in time for it. Elijah Cross now making his way. He's got Fontaine open on the right side, but fires over the Sullivan on the left for the three. Oh, and he gets it to go. This man hasn't missed from three, I don't think, yet today. No, as far as I know, he's either three for three right now from the three line. He's up to 13 points. This could look to be a big game for him today. You were saying to keep an eye out him, uh, eye out for him in the pregame, and so far that has absolutely been the case as Martin fires it over to Kianga, looking to drive the lane, lays it up, and it's good and one. A great effort there from Kevin Kianga. Get a little bit of momentum going for the Musketeers, the lay-in and the foul. And you like to see it there for Kianga. He's been putting a lot of work there trying to get inbound. He just couldn't hit it and finally gets it to connect there. And he's going to get the and one for this and see if he can turn this into a three-point play for them. It is up and good. The score now 17-7. Xavier with its second point score of the game now is Kevin Kianga up to three points with that and one. Solomon looking to take on Kianga one-on-one here. Gets the pick for three off the rim. But Williams, uh, I think, is going to get the over the top. Yeah, it looks like they're going to call it on Williams there. It's going to be a throw in here for Xavier. Going to try and hit trip double digits here. It looks like they were trying to resume play when RMU was making a substitution. <laughs> the ref had uh, had a couple of words there for uh, for Coach Williams. But here comes Xavier now with the new lineup. It looks like they've subbed in. That is number six, Chris Charles. 
Uh, Dwan Williams is the one that went to the went went to the bench for RMU as well. Goldsbury feeds it over to Kianga. Back to Goldsbury with a little bit of room. Backs out, looks for another lane of attack. Fires it down low. The shot from Kianga floats and just off the mark. Goldsbury gets the rebound though, fires it up, and he's fouled pretty hard there. I think it's going to be on number one, Elijah Cross for RMU. That would have been a great shot there if he made it, and you got to give it a little bit of respect there. Kianga, once again, he fought for that rebound, trying to rip it out of the hands of RMU and get it back to their players there. Yeah, him and uh, him and Chris Charles really battled for it, and that loose ball got out to Goldsbury. First shot up and off the rim. Not what you want to see there for the Musketeers. No, when you're down this big, you gotta. these free throws are critical to getting yourself back into this. Second shot up and off the rim again. Both of them just a little short. That is definitely got to be, uh, that's going to weigh on the mind of Goldsbury if he ever gets back to the line again today. And take a wild guess who got that rebound there for RMU on that play. Was it one David Sullivan? Oh, are you sure think? It <laughs> sure was. <laughs> that man is everywhere. Yeah, he is. As that shot from Franklin couldn't go, and now Xavier in transition. Looked for Eusebi. He's got it. Fires it across to John Martin. Shots up off the rim, and it's Xavier with the rebound. Fires it in, still can't get it to go. Eusebi looking for the foul, nothing there. At least they're finally, it seems like Xavier's finally getting some rebounds here though. They're not being able to finish, but some good progress for them. What a great layup, an outreach stretch layup by Solomon there. Yeah, Solomon just kind of floated it and it found its way home. That ball has been very generous to him in the early going. It seems like every time he touches him, it at least wants to touch the rim and usually go in. Nice steal there from Keith Franklin, and he'll lay it in. Beautifully timed, all ball, and obviously it looked like Kianga went down, but it was well after Char or, uh, Keith Franklin had control of the ball. Maybe trying to draw a little bit of a foul there because he knew that was going to be guaranteed points for RMU. He was already way gone. Yeah. 21-7 the score now, nine minutes into the first half is another steal. This time it's Mari Fontaine looking to put it in. Oh, and he I guess that counts as a dunk. He went up, slammed it off the rim, and it bounced in. A little bit of a dirty dunk there as it played around with the rim a little bit before it went in. Another turnover for Xavier. That's going to be three possessions in a row, and here comes Solomon the other way in transition. Yeah, Charles able to just poke his arm right in there and get it out of there. Cross is going to pass it out to Franklin. Franklin goes for the three. It's off the rim, rebounds loose, and it's picked up by Fontaine, who's trying the three. That one's going to go. And now RMU is just running away with it. I don't think anyone could have expected this kind of start from the Colonials in the opening nine and a half. I, I was not seeing this coming. As high-powered offense Xavier has been, I was not expecting this at all. RMU up 19 right now. And it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better for Xavier. RMU's playing to their strength right now, which is their defense, as Eusebi puts in a much-needed three for the Musketeers. 26-10 the score. I was just saying that RMU's defense has been leading to a lot of these chances, which has been their bread and butter in the past, but it has been on all cylinders through the opening stage here. Solomon fires a three off the rim. I think that might be the first three he's missed today. And it seems like they may be trying to feed Eusebi here. Eusebi's got seven of their ten points here. As it goes out, he goes for the three, off the rim, right into the hands of John Martin and rolls right out of his hands out of bounds. As Xavier is going to switch in a few players here, send in Sam Goodman and could not catch the other player's name here. I think it's Josh Bolesky's back in again. As Solomon takes a little stroll down the court here. Solomon. Looking to make a man miss, fires it out. That is Fontaine for three, can't get it to go. Eusebi with the rebound, and he'll carry it the other way for the Musketeers. Fires it hard for Bielski, who just can't hang on to the pass. I got to say, I'm glad there's someone sitting right there. That almost went into our camera down there. Yeah, that could have been an expensive break for us. You know. <laughs> well, that's the unfortunate part of not having a second person man in the camera down there. But here comes Cross the other way for the Colonials. Looking to put it up. Oh, and he slammed it off the rim. What a picture that would have been. That Here comes Xavier the other way. And the foul there on Fontaine. Eusebi tried putting it home. But wow, I got to go back for a second. 
Elijah Cross nearly went over a man to slam that home, but he just caught a lot of rim. That man, almost went, that man for Xavier almost went posterized right there. I, I think he would have been sitting on the bench for a few minutes thinking about that one if that would have happened. I think so too, but instead uh, Taylor Williams, the coach, talking to uh, Elijah Cross here. He knows how close that opportunity could have been. Yusebi's first shot up and in. He's been uh, carrying a lot of the offensive load here so far for the Musketeers, and he'll be looking to add another one here on the second foul shot. Yeah, he's got eight right now, eight of their 11. Let's see if he picks up his ninth here. So it's up and good. Nothing but net on that one, because they now have nine. Solomon once again walking down the court. It's Chris Charles throwing a block. Solomon up. Bounces off the rim. Back to Yusebi. Yusebi going in. Sam Goodman just couldn't handle it there off the pass. Elijah Cross tracking down the court. Solomon up. Off the backboard. Not even close to the rim there. Goodsberry coming down the court with the ball. Off the Xavier player. Bringing it inside. And he's gonna go to the line for two. Kevin Kianga gonna go to the line for two here as the foul appears to be on number six for RMU, Chris Charles. Kianga, Kianga looking to put him this free throw here. Shot is up and it is good. Kianga is the only other player besides Yusevi on Xavier's roster right now that has points. He's looking for his fifth here on this second throw. Xavier making a substitution now. Sam Goldman off. I'm not entirely sure who comes on. Do you know who that is, Jordan? I'm pretty sure that is Connor Madelon coming in for them. Fontaine, I, yeah, I'm not sure how. <laughs> Fontaine's protesting the travel, but I'm not going to lie. I saw that all the way from here. That was clearly three steps. Yeah, I saw them check his passport while he was making that play, so. Yeah. The shame because he had a pretty open lane to the net there, just one too many. Jaden Bristol has subbed in for the Colonials, mind you, in exchange for Fontaine here, his first action of the day. I remember from our series against Dayton, Bristol very good at drawing fouls, especially when he has the ball on offense. Yusebi for three off the rim. And <laughs> nice little play from Bristol to feed that ball over the Franklin. But Solomon charging with a whole head of speed. Gets the foul, and oh, are they going to call that? No, that wasn't a charge. That's going to be the end one. Okay. I was about to say, like, there's no way that could have been a charge. No way. You're not going to deny him those two points right there. And he might get a third one after that effort, too. That opportunity, a great example of how Solomon uses his speed to create offense. And this will put Solomon up to 18 points in this game. RMU's got 29. You can clearly see where a lot of the offense is stemming from here so far today. Here comes Goldsbury for the Musketeers. You s Fires a three, and it's in. Nice shot there from the team. Uh, I'm probably say, safe to say team captain if he is their club president, uh, Robert Goldsbury. I believe that's his first points of the game, right? Yes, that's his first points of the game. And Goldsberry has been looking pretty good so far. Maybe not putting up the points, but he has definitely been the leader of this team as it seems like he has the ball in every possession, if not starting with it for them. Nice steal there from Kianga against Solomon. Looking to go the other way. Goldsberry for three off the rim, but he gets his own rebound, tries again. That one again off the rim, and this one's picked up by Keith Franklin. RMU calling the timeout. Coach Williams probably want to get them, wants to get them reset a little bit as Xavier, I would say, has gone on a little bit of a run here in the past couple minutes. Yeah, they cut this lead down to 13 as RMU is now facing a little bit of a comeback here from Xavier. Goldsberry put up that three, and he almost had another three. But I made it 19 and cut that lead down to 10, almost single digits. Score 29 to 16 at the moment, 13 away in the first half here, seventh play. Jordan, what do you think's been the big thing that has led to RMU's uh, massive lead here in the first few, uh, the first half here? I would have to say David Solomon Jr. on both ends of the court, not only on blocking and rebounding, 
but he has 18 points so far. That only leaves 11 points left for the rest of the team. You take that out of their arm, you've got nothing, and they're in the bottom right now. Solomon has just been playing great for them right now. And I also mentioned Eliza Cross. He hasn't been putting up a ton of points, but he has had the ball in every possession. He has been setting up Solomon on a lot of these shots. Solomon now to the bench for a, probably a much needed break as number 22, Marquise Scott Ford, subs in for the Colonials. Franklin down low, back to cross at the point. Oh, off the outside rim and back. That's going to go out of play. Xavier Ball. He crosses out a lot of shots like that. He's just been having a little bit of trouble today connecting with those threes, but he's definitely been getting those wide open looks there. He just got to start connecting on him here. And you'd imagine with enough time that he will start connecting because he is a player who we've seen knock down those shots in the past. Goldsbury feeds it out to Bielski, who almost loses the handle but gets it back and puts in the lay in over Scott Ford. The Musketeers starting the rally a little bit here. And those are the hot foot points right there that Xavier's going to need to get back into this. Not afraid to get back in there and get his own rebound and fight his way back to the net. Bristol went for the lay and couldn't get it to go. And that's going to be RMU's ball is out on, I believe that was Bielski who kicked it, or not kicked out, but hit it out. Yeah, so tough. Be, sorry, go ahead. Tough little break right there. Just couldn't get enough underneath it. Is that the Franklin? Probably going to get across. Yep. Yep. Cross looking to set up the offense here. Throws it back down to the post for Franklin. Gets right around Bielski and lays it in. Short work there for Keith Franklin. Franklin hit him with the old barrel roll and slid right past him and brought it right in there for that easy layup. Easy two points right there as they have now surpassed the 30 point mark. Goldsbury looking to find some room. Drives the lane, puts it up, can't get it to go, but there is a foul on, I believe it is Scott Ford, his second, no, his first. Goldsbury going to the line. We'll see if he readjusts his aim finder a little bit here on his second attempt at free throws. 0 for 2 on the first attempts. Up and good for the first one. His first free throw of the game. He's now 1 for 3, looking to make it 2 for 4 right here. This is shot. big for them. Yep, shot is up and good. Score now 31-20 with 5.45 to play. The Musketeers offense starting to get going a little bit here, but RMU with a, still a pretty sizable lead, and I'm sure they'll be looking to add to it on this possession. Yeah, Xavier, Xavier's defense has five minutes here. If they can tighten things up, they might be able to cut it down to single digits. Franklin to Bristol. Looking to find some room, doesn't see anything. Feeds it to Cross. Kind of caught in a double team for a second there, but gets his way out of it. The Franklin pulls up with the shot, and it's off the rim and out. Here comes Kianga the other way to Goldsbury. Coming down with a lot of speed. Can't get the shot up off the rim. And now Franklin the other way. Both teams really picking up the pace here. Bristol. And I think Goldsbury was looking for the foul there on that. It looked like his elbow was held, to be honest. Ends up working out in their favor. Is yeah, they're going to say Bristol was out of bounds when he handled that ball. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle is that it's about as far away as we could be on this court from uh, where we're standing. Uh, but they're going to say that was out of bounds. So the Musketeers now coming the other way. Kianga holding on to the ball to start this possession. He feeds it over. Kicks it back out to Bielski, who drains the three. And just like that, it's a single-digit game once again. Xavier's defense is looking great right now, and their offense made a nothing but net three there from Bielski, and it seems like they are starting to put the pressure on. You can tell that Cross is getting annoyed with how, oh, and they're gonna say oh. that was a travel, what a shame. Chris Charles with an absolutely beautiful shot from the paint that would have uh, re-extended the lead to 10 but they're gonna call him for a traveling. I don't. I know the first traveling call, I absolutely agree with this one. That's a little more skeptical. Yeah, that's a missed chance by Charles there to get himself onto the board. And Anyways, now here's Gold a chance Murray for them to- Tries throwing it up. And they're gonna say that was in, and I, are they gonna call out an and one? I'm not entirely sure how they call that an and one. I don't even think the guy made contact with him, but alas, here we are. Just like that, it's a six-point game. Solomon's coming back in uh, this time for Chris Charles. Goodwin's going to try and cut it down to five if he makes this shot. RMU has got to be feeling the pressure right now. Yeah. When you have a massive almost 20-point lead, and now it's down to six. 
Yep, Jared Jones off the court for the Musketeers. I believe that is Xavion Eusebi who subbed back in. And the free throw is good, and just like that, it's a five-point game. Very interesting turn of events here in about the past, what would you say, five, six minutes or so. Yeah, and smart play by by Xavier bringing Eusebi back in here. He's their leading point scorer. When your team's hot like this, bringing him back in is probably a good decision. Bristol with a nice individual effort down low for the lay-in. I believe that's his first points of the game. Off the nice little uh, fake under the net. Here comes the Musketeers now. Goldsbury feeds it across to Kianga. They're battling down to the low post. That's Bristol and Eusebi really getting at each other. And a nice play from Bristol, and they're gonna say that. They're gonna say that's a foul on Bristol. They're gonna double foul. It's a foul on each. Foul oh, is that on what Eusebi they call? and a foul on Bristol. Well, they were really getting physical down there in the post. I guess they just said we're not having any of that. So that's gonna be a foul on the both of them. That's probably a bigger hit to the Musketeers, I'd argue, than to the Colonials, just as Bristol's come off the bench while Eusebi was in their starting five. And by a double foul, Xavier's gonna retain possession on this. That might be an interesting one to watch right there, Xavier and Eusebi, as they're still on top of each other. Yeah, Goldsbury driving low. Oh, and he's stopped at the rim by Ooh. David Sullivan. But a pass gets deflected and turned over back to the uh, Musketeers as that is Connor Madelon who feeds it over to Goldsbury to Eusebi. And he's blocked again by Sullivan. Bristol tried getting the rebound, and I think he caught a hand to the head. Yeah, he came down rough, tough on those knees. He's holding his left knee there. As he's going to be a little sore from that one. I'd imagine you would. He went up about as high as he could to try and get that ball and just had a very tough landing. Uh, hardwood floor, not uh, particularly known for being a soft landing. No, and that is why you'll see a lot of these guys wearing a little bit of padding braces on their knees, either a little bit of knee soreness, and even just that little bit there can do a whole lot for your knees. A little bit of protection. Solomon going to come in, dance around. Bounces off the rim. Goldsberry's got the ball back. He's running deep. Off to Bileski. Bileski lays it up and in. And just like that, it is a five-point game. Solomon with the ball. He's getting swarmed by Xavier players. Out to Bristol. And they're going to call backcourt violation on Bristol. His left foot was on the other side of the court. Boy, oh boy. Does that make things interesting here with 2.51 to go before halftime? It's a little mistakes like that that will cost you. Absolutely. Or you could have built their lead back up here. And now they're going to cut it down to a, they could cut it down to a single possession here by Xavier if they score any points. RMU had done a great job of limiting those in the early going, but a couple of them are starting to add up here. Bielski in the corner trying to get out. Feels it to Kianga. Kianga looking. Still holding on to it. Nowhere really to go with that ball. Back to Goldsbury. Goldsbury in the double team loses the handle. Keith Franklin puts it up, and it is in for RMU. A nice fast break opportunity there, and both of them had a bit of a tough landing. How do they not call a foul on that? He literally had himself wrapped around him. A and huge a block from Elijah Cross. Massive. As he's going to throw it to Solomon. Solomon's going to go up for the points, and he's going to get that easy layup too as RMU has just scored a quick four points. Looks like the ref is going after both of the coaches here. Apparently the coaches are getting, the coaches are calling for points and the refs do not want to hear the, the, ma the back talk from these coaches and they're going to give them a warning here. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, it's been going both ways. I've seen both coaches step onto the court at some point trying to plead their case, but the ref's not having it at the moment. 142 to play as Kianga for three gets it off the rim. Scott Ford with the rebound. Understandably so. That RMU head coach has a right to be a little frustrated on there as that was a easy foul cover there. But, well, they don't call it. You'll make the points up somewhere. Yep, Bristol for three, and he's hit hard on the shot. They're going to call that a shooting foul, and that's going to be three at the line for Jaden Bristol. Speaking of making up those points, right here we're going to have our first 
three three throws free throws here. Sorry, I had a little bit of a tongue twister. Yeah, I was trying there. saying that one five times fast. <laughs> Spurs was gonna go for his first one here. 119 to play in the half. Bristol's first shot up and good. Now 38-28. The Colonials have restored the double-digit lead. First time they've had that double-digit lead since around, I believe, the seven-minute mark of this game. Or of the half, sorry. And it's starting to get physical in here, too. These that guys, are, and it's only the first half. These guys are not afraid to it's get on It's only the first of half of game one. Because they have another game right after this. Bristol's second shot, no good. Third shot, no good either. Only able to capitalize on one of the three free throws. Here comes Goldsbury now. Only a couple possessions left for both teams before the end of the half, I'd have to imagine. Yeah, we only got a minute left. I'd say maybe two possessions for Xavier and a possession for RMU, and that'll probably round this first half off. They're going to put that as a reach-in on Jaden Bristol. That was uh, Connor Madelon trying to charge the lane there for the Musketeers. Bristol pleading his case, but... As we've seen with the refs, they're not really uh, taking much of anything today. Yeah, and it appears Madelon's going to go to the line here for two for that. One and one for the free throws here. Here comes the free throw from Madelon. It is up and good. So he will get the second attempt here. And that'll put him on the board, too, there. First point of the game. Looks to get his second here. Second one is up and good. And I think he was kind of hoping to miss that one there. Xavier kind of started to swarm the net. They did, and Coach Williams picked up on that immediately. And I know the ref saying he wasn't having any back talk from him, but I think the ref realized that was a justified uh, concern there from the coach. 44 to play here, Elijah Cross. Looking to make a move. A lot of space open down in the paint right now, but obviously a lot of people are playing the perimeter. Cross trying to drive the lane, can't get it to go. And you've only got a few seconds of difference between the shot clock and game, so why not hold it out and drag this possession out? Give yeah. Xavier as little time as possible. See, he floats in there and gets an easy layup. Yes, he does. Elijah Cross with a nice little job there to drive the lane, makes it 40 to 30. And now he'll face off against Goldsbury. Shifts off his man. The double team gets him again. This time Franklin with it feeds it up the cross right over the Marquis Scott Ford who can't get it to go. I'm amazed I didn't call a foul on that one. Floats a long pass for Madelon. Gets it down low there right before the buzzer to uh, Josh Bielski. It's going to be 40 to 32 Colonials at the end of the first half. A very, very uh, hectic last couple seconds. Yeah, quite the, quite the look up right there. You thought he was going to, from RMU, was going to come up there and put that easy point in by Scott Ford. He just overthrows it. Refs don't call a foul. And then it passes back down to the other end, almost skirts out of bound in the corner, and gets it barely to Bielski with a last-second buzzer beater point there. Three-two here at halftime for game one of RMU versus Xavier. We will be back right before the start of the second half. Um, they have not put up the time for how long the half's going to be, but if it's anything like the last time, I'm going to imagine probably about eight minutes. So we'll see you in about uh, five, ten minutes, folks. And we are back just about to start the second half of game one today between RMU and Xavier in club basketball action. Jordan, I know you are running some of the numbers here during the half. What do you got for us? Well, I'm going to start with the star of the game so far, and that's David Solomon, Jr. He's got 50% of RMU's points here, 20 in the first half. He's on pace out 40 in this game. On Xavier's side, Bleski and Eusebi both have nine. They're leading the team here. That's a total of 18. So all around here, spreading it out on both sides. Xavier has got it out to six players. RMU's also got it out to six, as it seems to be a little bit spread out here. Some players don't have a ton, but those little points add up here, as it is an only eight-point game. Xavier is not on pace for about ten points under their average, and RMU is on pace to be way over their points per game average of 50. Yeah, RMU traditionally a very defense-heavy team, uh, and they've really brought the offense, but a lot of their offense in the early going came 
from their transition play, t making turnovers on defense, and then putting it home the other way. And I think they're going to have to get back to that if they want to reopen up this lead because when they were really rolling doing that, they got out to like a 15-point advantage, and then the moment the turnover stopped coming, all of a sudden Xavier came right back and made it within like a five-point game. Here we go here for half number two. Score currently 40-32 to 32 RMU. On the floor for the Colonials, Cross, Scott Ford, Williams, Fontaine, and Solomon Jr. On the floor for Xavier, it's going to be Martin, Bielski, Goldsbury, Kiyanga, and I believe that's Eusebi. Yes, RMU misses their first shot on the opening possession of the half here. Xavier now the other way. Feeds it over to Martin. Martin looking over to Eusebi. Eusebi trying to make a move. Nice little spin there and does not get it to go off the rim. Solomon with the rebound, and he'll take it back the other way. Yeah, Eusebi look, looking good once again, right back to where he started, trying to put the points up for his team. And Solomon right back once again, getting those rebounds. Speaking of Solomon, fights through the foul there. He'll be going to the line. Tried going up for the floater, and, you know, if you get a, an arm on the shooting arm, that's going to be a foul every time. Yeah, and even with that arm on there, he almost got it in for the N1. He's just at the line for two now. We're trying to get this back up to a 10-point lead here in the first minute of the second half. Yep, shot is up and off the mark for the first one here. He's going to take a second one here. His Army's coach is over there talking to Elijah Cross and Fontaine giving them some pointers here on what to do. Shot up and not good either. And they're going to call a violation for getting in the paint before the ball hit the rim. That's going to be on Kayanga. So I think they're going to be trying the shot again. Yes, they are. Let's see if Solomon can redeem himself here and at least get a 50 percenter out of these first two shots. It is up and Ooh. still not good. I was going to say that would have been a critical foul right there by Kianga, mm -hmm. but it just bounces around and back out. Yeah, so Armu can't capitalize there on the uh, – the, the sh I don't know, what do we want to call it, free throw violation, basically. Yeah. Um, and that ball going out of bounds, just a bad pass there from Bielski. He was looking for John Martin, but Martin was going one way and the ball went the other way. Yeah, just a tough pass break right there. Fontaine's going to throw it into Cross. Cross will drop it back to Fontaine here, and he'll carry it in for the Colonials. No points here yet in the second half as Fontaine has Martin on him. Drops it down to Scott Ford. Drops it over to Solomon. He's looking, takes a deep three off the rim, no good. I wonder if the halftime break maybe has cooled down Solomon's hot hand a little bit. It seems to have chilled him a little bit here. Franklin's finally making his way out of the locker room for RMU. Uh, As Martin puts up the shot and rings it off the rim, here comes Scott Ford the other way with a good bit of speed. Looking to make a move. Drops it down to Williams. Feeds it out to Solomon. Almost went for the three, thought against it. Instead, goes for the fadeaway two. Can't get it to go as Kianga gets the rebound. A smart boot move by Juwan Williams right there. He was going to reach in and try to get the rebound. Realize that might turn into a foul. Throws his hands up there. Kianga takes the ball back down. Yeah, that's Bielski driving down low. Can't get it to go. There was just nothing there. Solomon and Scott Ford had it stuffed. The long pass there, the Williams, and he slams it home. A great read there to find Williams on the break. I'm honestly amazed that pass got there. I don't think the Musketeers were expecting the long ball there, but Williams takes it and drives it home for the first points of the half. Yeah, and I'm surprised RM, you didn't get a called for a foul down there on the other end on that layup attempt either, but I guess it was all ball, but... Kianga with it now for the Musketeers. Looks to drop it down low to Bielski. Scott Ford's all over him. Back to Kianga from deep. Off the rim and no good. Scott Ford with another rebound. He's been looking pretty good off the boards here in the second half. Yeah. Both of these teams have not been afraid to take some deep threes. Scott Ford gets an unfortunate break there. He's going to throw it deep from Kianga. Long ball there. The Bielski, he'll put it home. The only point so far this half have been those real stretch passes down court. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be sustainable. And it looks like uh, it's Kianga tying his shoe here as Fontaine was bringing it up the court. Yeah, this game's starting to look a little bit more like football here as they're throwing deep passes. Two points on each side so far, both off of 
massively almost full courts extensions. Yeah. Fontaine drops it to Williams. Williams will feed up the cross, who takes the three. And that one's going to go for Elijah Cross. Finally, he gets the shooter's roll. 55, or sorry, 45 34 now the score. As Eusebi looked at the three, ends up passing out to Goldsbury. Goldsbury against Cross now. Fires it back out to Eusebi. Anytime Eusebi's had the ball this possession, they've had two people on him Williams and that time Cross as well. Yeah, Gold, I'm sorry. RMU's finally realized that Eusebi's one of their. Big players here as Scott Ford gets in there with a reach. Just casually hit that one out of bounds and the fans had to duck a little bit not to hit that one. Scott Ford said, I don't care if you're right there. Boom, there's the ball. Which is honestly the way it should be. You know, you focus on the game. And that's, this is just how the, the crowd's going to be. Yeah, it's nice to see the crowd doesn't crowd eyes and look at down on their phone. It is very close to the sideline here. You could get a ball in your face very easily. Oh, yeah. Goldsbury with it now. He's got a wide open lane, but elects to go back out to Eusebi, who tries driving the lane again, and that one goes in for Xavier. 45-36 now as Jaden Bristol will bring it back up the court for the Colonials. A nice little play from Xavier. They drove the lane, realized they didn't have the angle they wanted, pitched it back out and tried again. Yeah, smart play by Goldsberry not to try and force it. The Solomon. At the point now, trying to figure out what he wants to do with it. Tries dropping it in to Williams, just a little bit outside of his long frame there. But Goldsbury will feed it to Eusebi. Williams has been all over Eusebi in this second half. Feeds it down to Goldsbury. Down low to Bielski. And that's a travel. Yeah. Bielski, who's usually been pretty think of the term right now. Disciplined. Yeah, yeah, about that's say, what I'm thinking he of. He hasn't really had uh, too many fouls to his name so far, but that's a that's a silly one for him to take there. Anytime yeah. you see a traveling call, I immediately I'm just like, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know how that that ha I know how it happens, but like it's just it's not a foul you want to take. As Bristol can't get it to go. Oh they're gonna say that's RMU's ball. Looks like Solomon got his hand in there, but Goldsbury was the last to touch it. Yeah, it looked like Solomon knocked it loose and it just bounced off of Goldsbury's chest and went right out. Solomon's going to inbound it now. Feeds it deep there. That's C.J. Desperate Johnson. I believe that's his first time on the court here today. Fontaine for a deep three off the front rim and out. Seems like both of these teams have come very close on these deep threes, and they've always been connecting with rim. Kianga. Looks like there's a foul there. It's going to be on Mari Fontaine. Yeah, and John Martin will pitch it in. Goldsberry back coming down, coming back down the court here. Facing some double pressure. Eusebi throws up the block. Going in, and there's going to be a reach in on Bristol. And Goldsberry's going to go to the line for two here. Yeah, as they, they are uh, down nine. I think they may have called that as a shooting foul in Bristol there as Goldsbury went up, I think, for the lay-in. Uh, right as he started leaving the ground, but they're going to say that was a, probably a shooting foul. Goldsbury shooting two. He is uh, two for four on him. Missed his opening two, made the next two. We'll see where he goes, what he does here. First shot up and good. A substitution made here for Xavier. John Martin off the court. And Sam Goodman checks back in. Goldsbury, that was his first point of this half here. Except a total of six now. Trying to pick up his second. It's up and in. He's locked it down on the free throw department ever since he missed those opening two. Solomon brings it down the court now. Looks for it, can't get it to go. They're going for the long pass the other way to Eusebi with a nice little move but can't get it to go. Rebound from Williams. And block a stop for something. And Bristol may have not gotten the block there, but him rushing past him may have just thrown him off just enough for that to be a miss. Sometimes all it takes is taking him out of their, their timing rhythm a little bit. As it looks like Solomon might be taking a look at his knee here. I think he uh, might have had a bit of an awkward landing after that, uh, 
that full speed lay in attempt coming back down here a second ago. Yeah. I think they're going to sub somebody in. It looks like they're going to bring in, that's number 55, Keith Franklin. So here comes Desperate Johnson. Looking to get something set up here. Solomon's not able to come back in this game. That's going to be a huge loss for the Colonials as he's had a lot of the points for RMU thus far. And not just a huge, huge loss for this game. They got two games today, so. And that's going to be an and one for Robert Goldsberry. They're going to say the foul's on Williams, and <laughs> Williams can't believe it. But here comes Goldsberry to the line with an opportunity to make this game the closest it's been um, since the opening like minute of the game. Yeah, since it was about 2-0 for RMU. See if Goldsberry can connect on this. RMU's coach is gaffed right now. He just can't believe it. He just can't believe he got called for that. Yeah, shots up and good, and now we've got a four-point contest, 45-41, as Jaden Bristol will bring it down the way here for the Colonials. As RMU is in a desperate situation right now, without Solomon, and things seem to just be falling apart. And Xavier just gets the timeout in as Goodman was getting swarmed by three Colonials, Williams, Bristol, and Fontaine had him covered. He could not even breathe down there. Yeah, Goodman was, uh, was the beehive, and uh, the three Colonials were the bears looking for honey right there. There's nowhere for him to go, and Xavier lucky to get the timeout to get him out of that situation. Looks like Winnie the Pooh made it out of there safe this time, but. 13-27 to go here in the second half. RMU with a four-point lead. You gotta imagine a lot of the conversation down there on the RMU bench is gotta be figuring out what to do on offense here. They've been a little, uh, little slower offensively here in this second half. Only five points in these uh, six and a half minutes since the half resumed. Yeah, they've only gotten five points, and Robert Goldsberry has five points just himself. As we now see Solomon going down to do a little bit of a work on his right leg here, hopefully to get that taken care of and be good to go for the rest of this game and hopefully the second game as well, as he has been one of RMU's biggest point scorers. Absolutely. RMU has uh, retaken the court here. We're still waiting a second for the Musketeers to get out there. All right, here they come. It'll be... Uh, Xavier's inbound here. Kianga will be pitching it in to Goldsberry, it looks like. And that has been quite the duo right there. Kianga and Goldsberry for Xavier as they have been making all of the points and all of the plays for them here. Loose ball found by Jaden Bristol and he's coming up with some speed into the corner for Desperate Johnson for three. Williams with the rebound, can't put it home. And they're gonna say that was an over the back there on Josh Bielski. And he cannot believe it, but Williams went down pretty hard there. I, I see where the ref's coming from. It seems like Williams may have just lost his balance there, just the way he came down. I don't even know if Bielski was, was even a part of that fall, but. I mean, RMU's not going to complain. They're going to take the two free throws here. First shot up and no good. No good. A couple heads off the rim. You've seen free throws become a big problem for RMU as they have had trouble connecting on any of them. I don't even know if they're 50% right now on this half on them. This half, they're definitely not. Through, through the course of the game, it's probably around there. Williams, second shot. Up and good. That's a big point there for RMU. Re-extends it to a five-point lead. Goldsbury will be taking it down here for Xavier. Looking to get something set up here. A score here from the Musketeers could make it a one-possession game. Yeah, this could be a big play for them. Kianga looking for room. Doesn't see much. He's going to take a really deep three. Can't get it to go. Williams with the easy rebound because no one was in tight there. Nice long pass to Desperate Johnson to get things set up. Bristol now feeds it over to Desperate Johnson. Lucky break for the Colonials there, but they can't get the shot to go. Goldsbury with a bit of a block on that attempt. 
A beautiful lay in there from Connor Madelon. I think he was expecting the contact. Fontaine didn't go up with him. Oh, and how Franklin with a great effort to stay inbounds, and they are not happy about that on the Colonials bench. And there's some vulgar language coming on down there as they are not happy with the refs right now on these calls. Goldsberry's gonna throw it in, and it is a three-point game here for Xavier as they are breathing down the necks of the Colonials right now. Goldsbury for three, the tie it. Can't get it to go. Mari Fontaine with the rebound. He'll come the other way. Lined up against Goodman, drives the lane, kicks it out to Williams. Williams with a spin and the shot, and it gets stuck in between the rim and the backboard. It's just stuck there. <laughs> Fontaine will free it. That's just a rough break there for RMU. Gotta love when somebody sticks a piece of gum up in there and that ball just hits her just right and you get it stuck in there and luckily someone's able to jump up there and get it. Madelon can't get it to go, gets his own rebound, misses it again. And they call a foul. And they're gonna so, call someone a, on the Colonials. I'm pretty sure it was a technical foul on Elijah Cross. Oh boy. He must have been mouthing off to the ref about something and they're gonna call it on him. Yeah, these, these refs have not been messing around today, that's for sure. No. So it's going to be uh, Zavion Eusebi for uh, taking the shots here on the technical. It is their world, and we are living in it. As the first shot is up and no good. No one near him. The ball just kind of sailed away a little bit. Eusebi's going to take his last one here. This to make it a two-point game. Here comes the shot, and it is up and good. Good. And because it was a technical foul, Xavier will retain possession of the ball as well. Which means an opportunity not only to tie the game for the Musketeers, but a chance to take their first lead in this contest. And what, what a comeback that would be after trailing by, I think at most, what was it, 17 earlier? I think it earlier? was 17 or 18. Goldsbury looking for the opportunity to tie it. Tries driving the lane pass, cross, and he swats it from behind. That's the second time he's done that. Meanwhile, the other way, Williams floats it in, can't get it to go, rebound, and he gets it in. Nice little transition there from the Colonials off the block from Elijah Cross, defeated up to Williams as Fontaine pokes that one out of bounds. Very busy couple seconds there. Yeah, and a big block out by Fontaine there as they did not have anybody down there ready to play defense on this as Xavier just booked it down there. Gives them a chance to catch up and set up a good defense here. Goodman feeds it into Eusebi. Looking to drive the lane, and he does. They're going to call that the shooting foul, but obviously with the shot not going in, it'll be just the two attempts. The fouls are starting to pile up here for RMU. They've got four so far in the half. Eusebi's going to come back to the line here. We just saw him a little bit earlier. He went 50%. They'll be hoping for 100% this time around here, although this time they'll have some faces watching him as he does it. Eusebi, his first shot is up, and it is good. And that once again cuts it down to a one-possession game. He shoots it here. It's going to be two points. One to go here. Looks like... Uh, they have, uh, it looks like RMU has subbed in uh, Danny Ritchie. Yeah, this will be Ritchie's first minutes of the game here as Eusebi sinks his second free throw and cuts the lead down to two. Yeah, he got subbed in for Maury Fontaine. Two point advantage right now for the Colonials as Elijah Cross looks to get him set up here on offense. And you're starting to notice that both teams are putting in players that really didn't have a lot of minutes in the first half. It's something that you normally don't think about in a game like NBA, in an NBA game or D1, but when you're playing club and you have two games in a day, you have to think about what you're going to have for the second game. You can't just put a guy in for the full 40 minutes of a game. The deep shot from Goodman is off the mark, and then it's out of bounds off the fingertips of Eusebi. He had a lot of time to hold that one in, and he just watched it bounce off his hands and out. Tough break there. 
Yeah, big break. Goodman had a wide open three there and just could not connect as well. Cross feeds it over to Chris Charles, who drives the lane, puts it up, and it's in. Just like that, 50 to 46, as here comes Madelon the other way for the Musketeers. Tries driving the lane with a very far lay-in, and it goes in. Ooh. Connor Madelon from laying it out from at least, I got to say, about 10 feet away, gets it to go. Go-go gadget extender layup right there. <laughs> as that was from very far outside of the paint. Madelon with the foul there. And it's going to be a throw-in for the Colonials. Just at the halfway mark of this game, or sorry, of this half, the three-quarter marks of the game. Williams with the ball. Feeds it out the cross. Looking to make a move. Goes around the pick. Doesn't like what he sees. Setting up again. Trying again with the pick. Gets him an open lane. Back to uh, Keith Franklin, who can't hold on to it. Here comes Kianga the other way. It's a two-on-one. Good defense there from Danny Ritchie, but the rebound will go in. I believe that's Madelon who puts it up and in. And just like that, it's a tie game. It's a big possession for RMU. Franklin's gonna go in. Nice little move there from Keith Franklin. First, a spin move, holds on to the ball, drives the lane, and he will draw the foul there. I'm not sure exactly who they called it on. Did you see who they called it on? I think it may have been on Goldsberry, because as he's communicating with the ref right now, or maybe, actually, I think it may have been Kianga because the ref just gave him a little pat on the back there for after discussing that call. And Franklin gets that first three point there. It's his first points of the second half here. Yep. The first shot did not count. Someone was down below the foul line. I think they were saying it's on number 12. That would be Dewan Williams. But the second shot's in and good, so RMU's going to get one out of that, but they should have had two. I'm very happy that they, he got that second shot. I already marked the point on my sheet. That ref didn't inform me quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Madelon for a deep three, and he gets it to go. And that is the first lead of the game for the Xavier Musketeers. Shades of Larry Bird from Madelon. As you can see, Elijah this is Elijah Cross for three off the rim. Williams gets the rebound. Oh, uh, and they're going to say that was the reach in. They thought they got the steal off of DeJuan Williams there, but they got a lot of hand. They're going to call a reach in on number 10, who just made that massive three to give them that lead. Arn, you got the break they needed here. Let's see if they'll capitalize on it and potentially tie this up or take the lead. Alex Scherkner for the uh, Musketeers subbing in here for Kevin Kianga as they feed it down low to uh, Mr. Keith Franklin who oh. hits it out. Man, a brutal turnover there for the Colonials, especially after they had just gotten the inbound. Absolutely tough there to keep possession of it and dribble without hitting the line there. And he just lost it, rolled out of his hands. Another deep three from Madelon. That one was not nearly as close as his previous attempt. You can't blame him for taking that. He had a wide open one. He just made one before that. The shot up no good for Keith Franklin, but he's not done yet. Trying again, doesn't get it to go. I'm amazed they didn't call a foul on either of those attempts. Yeah. Here comes Goldsbury with a lot of speed the other way to Eusebi for three, and he gets it to go. The Musketeers with a lot of momentum right now. RMU's got to find a way to get some points back on the board here. You go from being down to two straight clutch threes. You'd have a five point lead. Chris Charles with the shot, Williams with the rebound. It's gonna and they're going to call Goldsberry on a trip. Here comes the inbound for the Colonials here. As you can see, the frustration starting to build within some of the Colonials here as they just can't get anything to work right now. Elijah Cross. They're going to call that on Goldsbury for a push. Well, may not push, but probably a reach in. And unsurprisingly here, Goldsbury is going to go to the bench after picking up his second foul in the last 30 seconds here as they're going to bring in John Martin off the bench to replace him. It's going to be a one and one here for Elijah Cross. 
Uh, they could really use both of these here if you're uh, a Colonial supporter. Yeah, this will be big here for them. First shot up and no good. But Keith Franklin with the rebound puts it up and in. That's as good as you could have asked for on the rebound there from Keith Franklin. Yeah, he, Elijah Cross misses it. Franklin thankfully gets it and gets the two and then makes it a one score game and they're gonna call it a kick out on Cross. Yeah, he really went in for that ball on John Martin. He got the ball separated from him with the hand, but then he, the ball connected with the foot and just launched out of play. We're gonna feed it back to Madelon, out to Eusebi. Eusebi to Kianga, who is subbed back in here. Down low for Madelon and blocked away by Danny Ritchie. He was all over that transition play and said, not today. No, 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 as the dairy man has shown up. I don't know if you got that one, Richie. No, I didn't. Ah. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense for you guys at home. Because for I those who do not know, Richie's is a uh, milk brand from the center of Pennsylvania oh, that I know and okay. love in my life. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, there, not being from the state of PA, I there was no chance I would have known that. Ah, Jersey boy over here. Anyways, RMU is going to have the inbound here. A three-point game with 7.29 to play. Here comes Solomon. He's subbed back in. That's a good sign for the Colonials that his knee's good to go here. Feeds it over the cross. Looking to make something happen. Gets it down low to Franklin. Kicks it out to Solomon who couldn't handle the pass cleanly. Takes a tough two. Nothing going there. And it looked like Goodman got his hands on it there to block it. Martin trying to drive the lane against Franklin. Kicks it out to, out of bounds. They're saying Madelon's foot was past the uh, past the baseline, no, the, uh, the sideline there. Yeah, whenever he went to run, he took that little step back there with his right foot and just caught the line. Here comes Solomon now for the Colonials, bringing it back in. RMU with only 13 points so far in the second half after putting up 40 in the first half. They really need to find their offensive rhythm again as Solomon goes up for the tough play. Williams can't get the rebound to go either as here comes Eusebi the other way and it's smacked away by Chris Charles and he is out the door. <laughs> you know, we were talking about that door earlier. That poor door is going to take a beating. Yeah, but it was honestly probably a pretty good spot for it as Chris Charles was coming in with so much speed he needed that little bit of extra runoff space. Yeah, you definitely don't want to hit the sliding garage door on the other side. No, you do not. Xavier to inbound here. A floater for Kianga. Looking around, feeds it to Madelon, kicks it over to Goodman. Back to Madelon. Tries driving, but kicks it out to Eusebi for three off the rim, no good. Here come the Colonials the other way now. Sullivan over to Franklin. Tries getting it low to Charles, but decides against it. Franklin for three off the rim, no good. You can see they're starting to have a little bit of communication issues down there. Eusebi takes the long pass and then dishes it to Madelon. Back to Kianga. Martin with it now. Gives it back for three. Air balls it. Nothing going there for Kevin Kianga. RMU's defense looks like it's kind of regained its form here, but offensively they're still looking for answers as the clock ticks down below six as uh, Keith Franklin needs to tie his shoe here. That's been, a, that's been our third shoe tying timeout, I believe. Yeah. Guess these guys aren't doing the double bunny loop. Cross now to inbound. Gives it to Solomon. Looking to make an opportunity here. The RMU offense is certainly slowed in this second half. They need to find that spark. Solomon hoping to be that. Can't get it to go, but Charles gets the rebound. Fires it up on a nice little move, split in the defense, and he gets it to go. And then RMU calls the timeout immediately after it. 5.35 to play, a one-point game. This is probably going to come down right to the end. Oh, yeah. It's one-point game. It's going to be five and a half minutes left here. I don't imagine it's going to be a bigger lead than four or five, maybe, for a team coming down to this. It's going to be a last-second shot to win. And... I couldn't tell you who's going to be. It's been so tight right now. Maybe if RMU gets their communication skills back together here, they could get something going, but they've been having trouble communicating, and Xavier's been having trouble with their defense. 
Yeah, you could see in that first half, the Colonials were doing a really good job of finding each other, finding the open man, and taking easy shots. Those easier shots have not been as easy to come by in the second half, and as a result, they're starting to force shots that really aren't there. Um, so, and that's both a part of Xavier's defense tightening up a little bit, but also, you know, they're, they're starting to take opportunities that they shouldn't, especially now that this game's a bit closer. So we'll see which team's going to be able to hold their composure till the end of this one, because I'm willing to bet that's going to be the team who wins it, is whatever one uh, kind of limits the amount of bad shots. Yeah, and I'd say if you're RME, you got to look for Solomon, you got to look for uh, Franklin to, put, to play big for them. And if you're Xavier, Goldsberry's back in for them. And Kianga, both of them have to play lights out in these last couple minutes. Maybe watch out for Connor Madelon as he hit that clutch three earlier in the game for them as he's still over there on the right side. He's a little open there. Yeah, uh, Eusebi, one of their leading scorers, currently not on the court. So we'll see where the offense will come from here from the Musketeers as Goldsberry's got it. Tries driving the lane, kicks it out to Madelon. Coming in and... That is up and in, splitting the defense there. A nice effort from Connor Madelon. And it restores a three-point lead for the Musketeers. And Jared Jones, number nine, was the one who came in for Eusebio on the switch here as Jones is covering Williams here for RMU. Cross down low to Williams. And they're saying it's coming back. And they're going to call it on Jones, who just came in. Yeah, tough, uh, tough way to get sub back in right there, especially on Williams. Williams definitely has got the height advantage, and he was about to get right by him, and I think they're going to, was it, uh, Jones with the reach in. Bit of a discrepancy on the court right now if it's supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one or a throw-in. Cross saying he just threw a one-on-one -on -one earlier in this half. Which he did. That was the most recent time we've seen RMU attempt a free throw. That was a couple minutes ago. The ref's debating what it's supposed to be right now. They're still trying to figure out what's going on down there. Williams is at the foul line. He's fully expecting to take this one-on-one. -on -one. I think uh, the, the referees might uh, disagree a little bit, but... Nope, they, they've officially called it one on one. Seems like the refs may have gotten a little confused on some of the rulings here as both coaches were pretty certain it was gonna be one and one and now the ref is confirming here with number nine explaining to him what the issue was so he can improve upon that as Williams is coming up here for his first shot is up and good, which means we will get the second one of the one on one and we'll have the opportunity to make this a one-point game. If you're him, missing this may not be awful either. Yeah, Solomon. As you've got know Solomon in there. I was about to say, we know he has the ability to get up off the floor pretty good, but the shot will go in. Nice two free throws there for DeJuan Williams, and just like that, we have a one-point game. Under five to play now as Elijah Cross is all over Robert Goldsberry, but he'll be able to dish it out to Martin, who dishes it to Madelon, looking for room. Gets it to Kianga, who loses the handle on it for a second, but not very consequential as Solomon was pretty far off him. Martin with it now. Looking for space. Not finding much of anything. Wants to dish it out to Jones. Jones fires a rocket across the court to Connor Madelon, who will drop the Kianga. A lot of cycling here for the Musketeers, but not a whole lot of penetration. And as, as I say that, there's going to be the foul there. I believe that was on Solomon as Kianga drove the net. Yeah, not not what you want to see right now. You do not want to see Solomon getting more and more fouls. His foul count's starting to get up here, and you got to watch for RMU as they are at five team fouls for the half. You do not want Xavier to get these one and ones if you were them. Kianga, first shot up and good here. Restores a two-point gap as Eusebi will sub in for Jared Jones. And that'll be surprisingly Kianga's first points of this second half, and it comes off of a free throw of all things. Second shot up and good. 60-57 the score with 4.14 to play. He's also looking at the time, seeing how, uh, how urgent the situation is. I still think they have a fair bit of time. 
Solomon to Charles for three. Can't get it to go, but a cross tried getting the rebound. And they're going to say that's RMU's ball. They're saying that went off on Robert Goldsberry. Cross is going to do a little bit of stretch down there. Does he feel like he may have tweaked it a little bit going down? But Xavier's last game, they ended up losing 79-80. to 80. So we'll see if they're able to get a little bit of close game revenge on themselves here and redeem themselves from that last close loss they had in their previous game. Yeah, looking at the uh, the previous scores for these two teams, we know uh, Xavier is no stranger to close games. They've had a couple of real close ones. Uh, RMU's win or loss has been a little more spread out. They typically win by like 7 through 10 and will lose by about 7 through 10. Xavier's margin of wins usually about like 4 or 5 points. That ball out on David Solomon as he kipped it away from Connor Madelon. And that might have been the best move right there as Madelon was going to have a free lane to just go in for the easy layup. Mari Fontaine subbing back in here for Keith Franklin. Yeah, Franklin's been out there for a while for the Colonials. You know, it's some nice needed rest here for the end of this game. Eusebi for three, and he gets it to go. A big time shot there from Xavion Eusebi. Now the Colonials will probably look for an answer here the other way. Cross for three. Can't get it to go. And Eusebi's got himself up to 11 points in this half now. He has put up massive points. He's up to 20 points for them. They're saying that was on Elijah Cross on the shooting foul. Oh, no, sorry, the reach in. As things are starting to turn into a lead here for Xavier Six, Armu's defense is going to need to show up for this play. Yeah, they tried getting it out to Eusebi in the corner, couldn't find him, so they gave it to Madelon. The ball's now cycled around and it ends up in the hands of Martin. Tries driving the lane. Two Colonials there to meet him, and that shot's going to be off the mark. Good defense there from RMU. And this is going to be big right here, Alex. They need to get at least two out of this to give themselves a chance. They're going to say that is on John Martin, the foul. And that's going to be a one and one. Fontaine with a good opportunity here to get this, uh, this deficit a little shorter. Ideally, you're going to want to make both of these. It'll only make it a four-point game, but it's better than five or six. First shot up off the rim, nothing there. Here comes Kianga for Xavier. Over to Madelon, kicks it out to Martin with a wide open chance. Can't get it to go, Solomon with the rebound. Just a little bit too low there. Had the right trajectory, just off the rim. Cross, looking to drive the lane. Can't get by to Solomon. Back to Cross. Trying to get a play set up. Fontaine for a deep three. Gets it to go. A big time shot from Mari Fontaine. And nothing but net for Fontaine. He picks up his first points of the half, but more importantly, he cuts it down to a one possession game for the Colonials. As it is 63 60, 210 left. RMU called the timeout there. Big time shot from one of the seniors on this club. With three points the gap and with only two minutes to go, you got to imagine we're going to start seeing a lot of uh, a lot of timeouts probably being called as both coaches are probably going to set up uh, try and set up their teams for the best possible chance of success. Oh yeah, these timeouts are going to become critical for these guys. Game plan, game plan, game plan is going to be the discussion in every single one of these. Each time somebody draws closer or draws farther away, you're probably going to see the opposition call a timeout and try to figure out what they can do to keep that lead or cut it down to almost nothing and hopefully take it back. Looks like both teams have got, uh, what is it, five timeouts still? Am I reading that right? Yes. They so still have five left here. Both so coaches will have plenty of opportunities uh, to kind of get everyone set up the way they want them. Here we go for the inbound after that big three from Mari Fontaine. Cut it to a one possession game once again. It's going to be Goldsberry throwing it into John Martin. And Bristol is back in for RMU here down the last few minutes. He had quite the few penalties in the half in this game so far. Madelon looking for room. 
He's covered by Charles. Drops it to Eusebi. Eusebi with it. Drives the lane and a great poke there from Mari Fontaine from behind. Eusebi had an open lane and instead Fontaine just rifled that ball back all off the, ba uh, the baseline. This is the kind of work you want to see out of your senior here as they're going to try and throw it back in out to Eusebi. Fontaine Fon almost gets it again. He tried going for the interception. Eusebi tried splitting the defense there. Doesn't get the shot to go, but will get to go to the line after he kind of just was in the middle of three Colonials when he went up for that shot. Yeah, Coach was not happy about that one. It was kind of like, well, they were all just standing there. I don't know how you can call a foul on us if we're just standing here. But they do. And I think, I think they're going to call a technical. Something just happened. Yeah, a technical I, foul indeed. I don't know yet on who. On Dewan Williams, and they're going to throw him out. Oh, boy. He is now sitting on the bench. Franklin has come in for him. I don't know what he said, but the ref was not happy about it. And the coach, coach is now giving him a little bit of a talk here. Eusebi's first shot up and good. The second shot also up and good. So he's got those two, and I'm pretty sure he's got two more coming as well. The only person to take uh, free throws off the technical foul so far today is Eusebi. He's now, I believe, is it three for five or four for five on him. I know he missed one in the first set. I don't know if he missed them both or not. Anyway, one more attempt here from Davion Eusebi. Doesn't get it to go. So despite the technical, only two out of the possible four there for Xavier, and you got to imagine if RMU's offense gets hot here toward the end of the game, that could come back to bite them. Yeah, and if you're Eusebi, you don't like the what you just did, honestly. There's not too many times you get four free throws in a row. There's not even really much of any way to do it except for the way that. It just happened, you yeah. force a foul, and then you get a technical. And to only get 50% is to only get those two points. Realistically, Xavier could have put it away if they would have gotten the four there and made it 67 to 60. Seven points is hard to come back from with a minute 42 left. Well, we do know RMU's offense can run good in transition if they make uh, clean passes. So we'll have to see if that comes into play here. But we are now under a minute 35 and ticking away as Elijah Cross tries poking that ball away, but Goldsberry is able to pick it up again. Fontaine all over John Martin, and there's a scramble for it. They're calling jump ball. And they're going to give it to Red. Great effort there Earn. from uh, Elijah Cross and Mari Fontaine to win that ball. Refs are having a discussion on whose it is. Yeah, they're still, they're still figuring this one out. There's debate all over the place. The refs are talking, the players are talking, the coaches are talking, and I think everyone's got a different opinion on where this should go. <laughs> they ruled possession here after that ground tussle, and the question is, which team currently has possession? It switches every time that that changes here on a play that results in a sort of a ground tussle or players fighting over the ball on who gets it. And there seems to be a discussion on whose it's going to be. And they're giving it to Red here. Looks like it's going to be RMU's ball, 124 in this one to go. Uh, you got to imagine they need some points here uh, with uh, less than 90 seconds to go on the clock. Yeah, and when you can only take 17 seconds off the clock for that whole situation to happen and you come away with no fouls and you get the possession, yeah, no points, no fouls, and possession. Uh, the big three that they needed out of that. Elijah Cross to Fontaine. Fires it down to Keith Franklin, who lays it in for two. Just like that, it's a one possession game again. And here we go, it's the full court press time. And you saw Goldsberry, he was like, I'm just gonna let you have this because I don't wanna force a foul and give you more shots and more points. And RMU's gonna fight for it. Bristol coming in and fighting. 
And I think that's going to be a timeout from the Musketeers bench. Yeah, there was not much they could have done there. That timeout saved them from turning the ball over to either Bristol or Franklin. We've seen their coach do that a couple times this game. He sees one of his players in a tough spot, and he's willing to, to call the timeout to relieve them of the pressure. And if you're these benches, you've got to think, if you're Xavier, we got to stop these guys because they're kind of coming after us right now, and we haven't got much of an answer in terms of turnovers and scoring. And if you're RMU, you just got to think, get to the net. Get to the net. It doesn't matter if the points go in or not because – you got to hope that whenever you get there, you force a foul, even if it doesn't go in. With the way pregame, we thought this was going to be a tight one. With the way the game started playing out, we said, oh, never mind, anything but. And yet here we are once again, after basically 39 minutes of the 40, right back to where we started, thinking this is going to be a really close game. And that is exactly what it's turned into here. A minute three left. So on the court for RMU right now, it's Elijah Cross, Mari Fontaine, Jaden Bristol, Chris Charles, and Keith Franklin. Notable absence from the court there, David Solomon. Uh, but, you know, we have seen a couple of these guys. We've seen Keith Franklin put up some points. We've seen Elijah Cross put up some points. Mari Fontaine had that huge three a little bit earlier to get that game close again. So we'll see where they do here as Kianga tries driving in, and they waved it off. They call they it a travel. travel. Oh, my. Oh, that's got to make you sick if you're a Xavier fan to see that. You thought it was going to be a two and one. And RMU comes away with a travel. A huge break there for the Colonials as what this could very well turn into a huge point swing if the Colonials score on this end here. The Xavier bench and fans are getting pretty lively here. They here are Charles looking for this win. Puts it home, and now it's a one-point game with 46 seconds to play. Kianga gets it up to Eusebi. Drops it back to Madelon. Looking for room. 35 seconds now, double teamed. Eusebi driving the lane. Doesn't get it to go, and the Colonials have it. Here comes Chris Charles the other way. And you're down to 25 seconds here. If you're RMU, you're going to hope to score here and hopefully put it away. You're going to run the clock almost down to nothing here. Here comes Cross, lays it in, and they have the lead. You got to be careful here if you're RMU. And it looks like Elijah Cross landed badly after that lay, and they're trying to stretch out a cramp. Someone called a timeout. I'm not sure if that was RMU or Xavier. 13.6 to go on the clock here in the arena. Our scorekeeping time for the stream should be pretty close. I can't exactly say what it's at, but on the game clock in there, it's 13.6. And I think it was an injury timeout by the refs here. The refs called it as they're trying to work this cramp. The coach and one of the assistants here working on cross here, trying to work it out of his, it appears his, appears his thigh may have cramped up a bit here. It was certainly a tough landing because it was certainly a tough shot but a really, really strong effort from Elijah Cross to drive the lane, put in the layup, and with 13.6 to go, RMU has picked up their first lead since the middle of this half. Yeah, and if you're Xavier, you're thinking right now, we've got 13.6 seconds, and all we need is two to win this. So you've got to think pushing it in, and Cross is not walking on it. He tried to put weight on it, and it is just hurting right now. They're going to bring him over and work on it, and hopefully hopefully we see Cross back in the second game, and hopefully he's all right. RMU is now going to call a timeout after the ref's uh, injury timeout has ended, and we're going to get another full timeout here as RMU continues to discuss what to do as the coach was over with Cross helping him with that injury and not able to be with his team. If you're down in that Xavier huddle right now, if you're if you're coaching the Musketeers, what play do you draw up to try and get them the points here given the lack of time left on the clock? If I was them, I'd probably try and feed it to Eusebi. Eusebi has been pretty reliable in most parts of this entire game and he's barely missed. And when he has missed, most of the time he's drawn a foul. And then he makes most of those. He makes at least 50% of those, over 50% of those free, free throw shots he's taken. So even if he doesn't make it inside the paint, 
and he draws that foul, he's going to make at least one of those and at least force overtime, if not win the game for them. So I think that's going to be the guy to watch. And it's probably going to be a feed from number five, Robert Goldsberry, if Let's Goldsberry see. doesn't take the shot himself. On the court for the Colonials, Charles, Bristol, Franklin, Fontaine, Scott Ford. For Xavier, it is Kianga, Martin, Goldsberry, Eusebi, and I believe that's Madelon. And it looks like Franklin may have just tried to tie his shoe just to give them a couple seconds there. As it comes to Goldsberry. Under 10 to play now. Goldsberry looking for room. Tries driving the lane. Doesn't get it to go. Franklin gets the rebound. He's going to hold on to it. And he's fouled with 1.8 to go. And I think that will just about do it. Kionga grabbed him by the jersey and almost lifted him up in the air on that. Well, he realized that they needed to find a way to try and get that ball back. Now, I got to say, this is the one thing that has been a little concerning about the Colonials game so far here today. They have not been the best from the stripe. Franklin's got to make both of these because we've seen Xavier make deep threes, and you got to think it's going to be a half-court shot coming here after this. And it's probably going to be to either – they got. I know Eusebi and Madelon both have made some deep threes. Yeah, Eusebi and Madelon, and they've got Goldsberry down there waiting. So it's probably going to be a throw in from Kianga as Franklin goes for the first throw here. And it's going to be. Shot is up and. Shot is good. good. A big time shot there from Keith Franklin. A big one that they needed there. He's got one more coming. Taking the dribble, it's going to be up. And no good, he gets, gets his own rebound. rebound. And that'll do it. The clock sounds on this one. 67-65, the Colonials will hold on to win it after amassing a huge lead early. It absolutely evaporated through the back of the first half and into the second half, but they were able to come back late in this one, come back from a six-point deficit to hold on for the two-point victory. What a game. And we still have another one to go. Yeah. If, if the second game is anything like this first one, we have got quite a series coming up against these guys. My one concern for RMU right now is Elijah Cross. He's being labored and helped back to the locker room. And yeah, he's he been is, a star player for them. That could he, be a big problem. It is worth noting he is walking back under his own power. That is a very important thing that we should mention. Uh, but certainly he is putting he's, – he's being careful with how much weight he's putting on that leg right now. So we'll probably have another few minute intermission in between uh, games one and two here. I'd imagine probably the same five to ten minute break. Uh, who was uh, who was your MVP of game one, Jordan? Uh, my MVP of game one. Ah, uh, I'd have to go with Dewan Williams. Honestly, I, I'd say in the second half. In the second half, he was he was clutch for them, coming up with points. David Solomon was great in the first half. I mean, point wise. But he was kind of ghosted in the second half as RMU kind of had to rest him for the second game. So we are going to step away real quick. Game two, we'll be back at you in about four minutes.